Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be opening February's sketch box, which is an art supply subscription box. And we've got some featured art on the box by Jackie Allen. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And a pretty epic. And your scissors are cat. <laughs> Pretty floral print and a gray green. I hope you can hear that somewhere in the background. I'm not going to look at the supplies yet because I want to see And of course, the sketchbook sticker. So first on, um, we got some Durand ink tents, and a color pencils. Okay, yellow, red, violet, blue, and green, and black. And a lucky marker. Okay, blush man. So we have first bamboo brush. It's pretty stiff, but I'm sure that will go in and stay on there. So it's hard to get it back into the plastic scene without bending the brush. And prism color brush pen. I've actually never tried their brush tip pens before, so that's awesome. I'm excited to try that. Looks like a really vibrant red. And a giant sketching wood. It's a water soluble pencil. And I've seen these before and haven't tried them yet, so I'm excited to try this as well. And some Grassy confetti stuff at the hotel. Alright, so I try out the supplies. I try to place my color brush pen first, and I love it. Oh my god, the red is so vibrant and beautiful. And it, just, it has a nice springiness to the this one. The La Plume tip, I wasn't sure how long it was supposed to be because it was really loose and uh, it took a little bit to. There's the water solid pencil. It would be interesting to use this in a piece. I felt kind of interesting looking on top of what as well as getting it wet afterwards. And the giant watercolor pencils. Also, very vibrant colors. And as I use with bamboo brush beads, I uh, realize I don't like the brush at all. It, it holds a lot more water than I'm used to. I'm used to working with very small brushes, so the brush seemed to absorb the, the, um, the pigment of the watercolor pencils and kind of get rid of some of the color 
So it would be good to put some like background washes, but not for details. And I try to go from one color to the next, but I kind of fail, so I just <laughs> mesh it all into one color. Try to go from red to blue. It works a little bit better. Other than the bamboo brush is a little too big for my liking. Absorbed a little bit too much of that pigment. I wanted to see if I could make it new color, combine two other ones, and make orange with the red and yellow, so that was a good thing. And I can pair the, um, I don't know fast, but the red of the Prismacolor brush pen and the red of the watercolor pencil are already the same, so I'll use that to my advantage. And today I'm drawing a fan art piece of some characters from the Stormlight Archive by Brendan Sanderson. Uh, so we have Shalon and her two illusion forms, I guess I would call them the Veil on the left and Radiant and Brightness Radiant on the right. And then I also have Pattern in the background, who's another character from the book. It basically allows her to use her powers as illusion. And the only thing I really have to say about sketching with the water soluble pencil is that it doesn't erase as well as a normal pencil. So I wouldn't use it as a under sketching tool in the future, but I wanted to use all of the supplies in this piece. And then I use the Christmas color pen for a bright red hair. And I really love the wine variety that it gives. I'm going to use the Latin pen that makes bright sea foam color for her eyes so that they're going to try to look like they're glowing at the end. Um, which doesn't really happen in the book. Her, the eyes get lighter when they use their, their magic, but I don't think that they glow necessarily. At least not their whole eyes. I'm going to try to do some shading with the water soluble pencil. And you can see I switched to a different brush, a smaller brush that I'm not used to because the bamboo brush is just not good for details. I actually really like this water soluble pencil. You get a lot of different um, ranges of gray with it. So if you wanted to do just a um, gray scale drawing, it would be really good for that. I'm going to start using the watercolor pencil a little bit in my hair, filling in some of the thread. And at this point, I'm debating whether just to keep the red as like the main focus and then just do it for skin and the gray but then I actually go in and do a lot more color with the watercolor pencils which I'm glad I ended up doing so it turns out a lot better than what I was originally thinking. Uh, I looked up a few references for uh, the purple wing design, which is called a Havana in the book. It's kind of like a dress suit. <laughs> uh, I guess I can describe it. And then her quote unquote safe hand uh, would normally be covered up by the entire like elongated sleeve, but since I wanted to to have her holding the sketchbook, I had her just wearing a glove, which is another thing that they do in the book to hide the safe hand. And go in with the water, so the pencil again, I'm to add some darker strands so that 
Let's see. Um, a little more natural. I struggled with the hair at first, but I'm going to fix it up there. Ugh, I don't know why I went back to using the bamboo brush. I don't hate it, but for detail work, it's not the best. If I need a big background wash, then I'll give it a try again. But, uh, not good for details. Alright, what do I do next? Looked at a pole reference for her hands. So she's holding a sketchbook, and for a while it kind of looks like a tablet. <laughs> It's supposed to be a sketchbook. Her powers are like, she has to draw what she wants to make an illusion of. So like, she draws out her characters before she can become them. I don't think it's exactly necessary, but it definitely helps her. Pine jump ahead. I haven't worked on it for a while. And here is when I decided to make, try to make a skin tone with the water pencils. So I lay down a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. I'm going to burn these together and realize it's a little too dark, so I tried to dab a lot of the water and take it up with the paper towel. And that seems to help a lot. And she's a pretty um, pale character, so I tried to lift off a lot of it. And the ruffles. I didn't really have a brown pencil to use, so I used the red. I guess I could have used the red color. Oh, I don't know what that sweet thing was. <laughs> what I had said. I'm very loud there. <laughs> I'm going to try to fix up her hands a little bit. I wish the water soluble pencils are a little easier to erase. And the water color pencils are even harder to use. Then I just slightly sketch out, uh, fill in the space of blue. So now when I do the tests, that just a little bit actually turns um, quite darker when you get it wet. And I try to erase a little bit, but it didn't work. I swear I want to put some magic effects in towards the other characters. To make it like a almost a ghostly, see-through emphasize the illusion magic. At first I was considering drawing them or coloring them in realistic as well, but uh, I decided against it because I wanted the focus to be in shallow and a pretty see-through effect of the pink too. 
I'm gonna try to help my fill in blue, and I'm just using water over the black colored pencils, and it's turning that part of the blue. Trying to use the damn blue brush again. I'm going to do a really second uh, layer blue over certain areas to try and make it look darker. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to emphasize some folds in her clothing. Showing her a little shadow. And darkening up some of our outlines as well. Or I only put water over the second watch of blue. I realized that I forgot to do the skin color of her arm, so I want to do that first so I don't uh, accidentally blend in some of the blue to the skin color. That's the most around the shading of her boobs in this picture. <laughs> I don't know, I can get them to look be thin. <laughs> I can't get them. And here I start shading the bottom of the sketchbook. Just with the spotter solar pencil and darken up some of the lines 
but then put the same tool. Shadows on other things, though. I'm doing the lining and the buttons, and the kind of. Goldy coloring, but it is really hard to do gold with just yellow and red. And normally I would shade gold with a brown color. Okay, so there is a lot of things up for here a little bit, so I have a little bit of yellow. Because normally I've had like some more of the orangey color here, and then I have some loose strands, violet here, which is like, I think it looks more natural than just one big, one big shape. One big shape for the hair. And it definitely helps to add the violet here. Add some red around her eyes for the eyelash color. Kind of subtle, but also a little bit. And I'm going to go in with the looking pen again and uh, outline the amazing characters. For a pattern, I have to trace a circle out uh, and look at a reference again. Actually, some artwork that was included in the book um, for reference, and try to get it pretty close. But uh, his pattern <laughs> is actually really hard to <laughs> see. Many, many strands. Try to just go one section at a time, I guess. And I just use the water soluble pencil, soluble pencil for this part and wetted it to make it darker and kind of blurry. I started using the bamboo pencil, but then I switched, or the bamboo brush, and I guess I should a smaller one later. And I actually noticed a few strands of the bamboo brush were falling out at this point, and I felt like I couldn't use it that much, so I was a little disappointed that strands were starting to fall out of it already.
And here I'm going to add some more fine lace drains because I heard that some of them kind of washed out. Uh, just a lot of the pattern. And I want to add some white highlights, so I used my white gel pen, which wasn't included in the box, but I felt that this piece needed a little bit of white pop in it to make the magic look a little bit more sparkly and shiny, glowy. First I do a little bit too much with the ink and then I go back in with the water soluble pencil. I have some more dark details. You can actually see my eyelashes again. And then I add a little bit of uh, hatching in the background so that the illusion characters pop out a little bit more. And I decide to turn that just into a gray wash in the background. You can still just kind of see the impression of the hatching, which I really like. Pretty much it, guys. Um, so here's my final fan art piece. So Shalon, Bill, Brightness Radiant, and Calvin from the Stormlight Archive by Brian Sanderson using the tools from the Real Sketch Box. And also, I'm going to say a big thank you guys for um, for my followers. Uh, I reached 100 followers the other day, so I just want to say a big thank you guys, and I will be opening up a Patreon pretty soon here, which was one of my goals after hitting 100 subscribers, and I will also hopefully be figuring out how to live stream via YouTube pretty soon here too, so you guys can watch me make our live. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Again, it's a thumb. Oh my god, I hate you so much. <laughs> uh, I fucked up my signature at the end here, so I just need a dark splotch in the over with a white jet pen. I know it's awful. Oh, good. It looks so much better than I thought it would.